Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the DH Quadcopter. We have two versions available, the recreational version and the tactical version. The biggest difference, the recreational version is just a regular quadcopter. The tactical version is a quadcopter with a minigun strapped to it. We'll start off with the recreational one before we go crazy with things, though, so we'll go ahead and spawn this thing up. And if you just install the mod and try to fly it around, absolutely nothing is going to happen because by default, there are no controls bound for this, so you're going to have to bind them yourself. So you go to the options menu, then you're going to go to controls, and then you're going to go to vehicle specific, and you have to bind the ones for the DH quadcopter. But you don't have to bind all of them. As you see, there are a lot of blank ones for me, because for example, on ones like height, you can have it where it's bound to the right analog stick going up and down. So you don't need a separate one to go up and a separate one to go down, because the right analog stick does both of them. Then you have two down here, which are flight mode and fire gun. We'll be talking about those ones separately, but the rest of these are pretty simple basic controls for a quadcopter that are self-explanatory if you're kind of familiar with how quadcopters work and right now it looks like it's barely spinning right it's just spinning so fast it looks like it's not moving because if we go to slow-mo this is a hundred times slow-mo that's how fast it's going when we go to full time it looks like it's just kind of barely moving in whichever direction it feels like doesn't it so anyways let's go ahead and get this thing into the air real quickly and there are multiple camera angles you can use this first one is just kind of the regular camera you would use on the truck and stuff the one problem with this one though is if you have the quadcopter spinning around it's a little easy to get disoriented about which way is forward and which way is back and then you end up going the wrong direction so it's not the ideal camera angle but it works as long as you pay attention to that kind of like real life if you had a real quadcopter from the ground you have to pay attention to that just like this camera angle we also have the external camera angle which is just asking for trouble like you lose sense of direction at all times i have no idea if there's a building i'm gonna slam into or not but it kind of works good for like just seeing dramatic angles of the quadcopter. Like you have another quadcopter watching your quadcopter. That's basically what it feels like right here. So I am way above the city. Apparently I did not realize how high I was because this camera is so uh, difficult to tell what's going on. Like it was definitely not made for this, but you could totally use it for that. Then we have the onboard driver camera. This one is probably the easiest one to fly because it's like flying any other kind of uh, flying thing when you have just a camera that's right there on it so if i wanted to land right here it wouldn't be too difficult to do it i don't think a little bit up more and pull it back and there we go that wasn't too bad we also have this camera which is a locked rear camera this one works just as well as the other one it just gives you kind of a more sense of perspective of where you actually are compared to your surroundings again pretty easy to go ahead and just land this on a building if we want to whoops a little bit overshot that though go back go back all right let's gonna let's move to this building because one problem is it's kind of hard to see behind you at least the way i have it set up so we're gonna land on this building instead and there we go that was pretty good and now how about we go ahead and wreck this thing we'll use the orbit camera for this and we're just gonna slam it into a building and watch it explode in pieces at full speed and they'll probably do a slow-mo one of these as well because there are a surprisingly large number of pieces that can break off on this thing so boom pieces flying everywhere and quadcopter going to the ground and that was just this little box is flopping all over the place. The rest of the pieces, they're gone as far as I'm concerned. They're scattered throughout the city as rare collectibles you can go and find. But I'm not going to do that because that would take forever. It's also worth mentioning, in addition to the cameras you get by hitting the next camera button, you also can hit the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 keys on your keyboard to have some additional cameras. One of which is this. Okay, if you can't tell what's going on, let me slow things down a little bit. One of the cameras is mounted on one of the blades of the quadcopter. So at 100 times slow-mo, you can see exactly what's going on. At 16 times slow-mo, you might be able to fly. At anything more than that, it is seizure-inducing. So we're not going to do that anymore. Instead, we're going to go back to this camera. And we're going to fly this thing around a little bit more. Now, there are two flying modes. The one I was using earlier was assisted, but there's also one called raw. So let me show you what the difference is. With assisted, no matter what you do, you're not going to accidentally flip the quadcopter over it feels like like i can go back and forth trying to flip it over try to flip it from side to side and it just doesn't want to flip over but if we change to raw mode well yeah you can flip it over if you want to no problem and you could do crazy stunts like that and i'm actually surprised that worked out i thought for certain i was gonna crash for a second but it is much much more difficult to control this thing like as you see i am kind of all over the place right here, to be honest with you, and I am still shocked that I have not crashed. I'm just spiraling out of control at this point in time. And now we're gonna finally crash. So with raw mode, you can do a lot more, but it's a lot harder. With enough practice, you could probably get really, really good at raw mode, but I haven't had a lot of practice, so we're gonna keep flying in assisted mode. And it seems like every time you reset it, it goes back to assisted mode automatically. So if you wanna fly in raw mode, you always have to re-enable it. And then 
You go from a competent pilot to somebody who looks like they're completely out of control. I mean, I can do some things here and there, but it's like I last maybe one or two minutes before I end up crashing. But it looks great for those one or two minutes. Like, I look like I really know what I'm doing. I don't. I can kind of tell it which direction to go, and then I hold on for dear life as I hope that it doesn't crash into anything. And this is what it looks like when I do that. Like, if I try to be real precise and go in between these two buildings like this... Nope. Well, I got in between the buildings. I just lost all of the quadcopter bits in the process. So in the end, that's a failure. Before we get the version with the gun, let's see what happens when we just drive a car into the quadcopter. You might think the quadcopter would just be pushed out the way, but the quadcopter does weigh 500 pounds, apparently. Like, that's really, 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 really heavy for a quadcopter. But if you look at the statistics for it, it says 551 pounds. So let's see what happens here. Truck going into quadcopter with really fast spinning blades. And unfortunately, I can't use the camera normally because I had to unbind it for the quadcopter. So I gotta like use the mouse to do the camera and stuff. It's a little awkward because I don't usually do that. Anyways, here we go. What's gonna happen here? Little bit of a shredding from the blade until it just broke in half. And after that, the truck basically plows through the quadcopter like it ain't even there. And the quadcopter is completely destroyed. I wonder, can you fit this quadcopter in the rear of the truck? It might just be a little too big, can't it? I could try flying it into the truck or I could try doing it the easy way, which is just teleporting it. That's probably as close as you're going to get. And you can see it just barely doesn't fit in the bed of the pickup truck. But that gives you a good idea of how big it is. Now, let's see. Can we drive around with it in the bed of the pickup without it falling out? So going around the corners pretty aggressively here just to make sure that if it's going to fall out, it does. And so far, so good. Although these are a low speed maneuvers. We got to do some at a little bit higher speed. So this is a 50 mile per hour tight corner, a little bit of a slide to it. And it seems like it's holding on. So yeah, I don't have to worry about it falling out. Here's a different question. Can you launch it from the rear? Probably not considering both of the rear blades have broken. We only have the two in the front, which can't even spin because they hit the cab of the pickup. Whoa! I did not know that you could not drive here. When did that happen? That is weird. Okay, well, we don't need the pickup truck. We only need the drone, so let's just grab it. And we'll get the tactical version to finish off the pickup truck because the pickup truck is basically useless since it no longer drives. And we'll put it in orange, but as far as I know, there's no difference what color you pick there. It's always going to have the exact same colors. Yep, same colors as normal on the tactical. So wait for a second to get it going, and we are flying. Now, one thing that's cool is when you have the gun equipped, and you use the correct cameras, you have a little bit of a crosshair for yourself to aim with. So you know exactly where your shot's going to be going, so you can be nice and precise. No crosshair on this one, but you have a pretty good idea just looking at where everything is. So let's go ahead and rotate to the truck. A little bit over rotation. We'll use the one that has the crosshair to make sure I actually hit it. And then start shooting at it and tearing it up. You know, I'm missing a lot of shots, but I'm also hitting a lot of shots. I'm doing this the hardest way possible because I want to hover as I shoot them, which makes it so much harder. If I really want to just shoot them and be lazy, what I could do is I could pretty much just like try to land this thing right in front of it and then just shoot like that and kind of go up and down a little bit here and there. Like, see how easy it is to shoot it now? Look at this. No problem. But that feels cheating-ish. I already got enough with the real shot, so I really don't care if it feels like it's cheating. And we're out of bullets, so how about we just charge at it with the drone itself? That did absolutely nothing. I think I just damaged the drone. That's all I did. Anyways, we'll take a look at the damage to the truck before we reset it. Yeah, truck is beat up. It was already a little damaged. Now it's really beat up. We'll go ahead and reset both of them. Oh, yep. Of course, I put the truck on top of the drone. I forgot they were inside of each other, basically. So we'll just go ahead and grab the drone and move it over here. And we'll go back to the same camera we were using before. And we will destroy this truck. I'm going to do it the lazy way so I can make sure I hit every single one of my 400 shots into the truck the first few didn't look like they did that much but now we're getting some damage into it we got 250 shots left still falling in the number of shots and we're getting recoiled backwards so far i can barely even see the pickup truck but i know i'm still hitting it that's all that matters is i'm still hitting it okay maybe it matters a little bit if i can't see it no no i just hit the fence because i can't see my butt i accidentally hit the fence so we shot the truck with 300 shots we could take another look at the damage to it Pretty much just as beat up as last time, if not a little bit more. Now we're going to make things a little bit more challenging. Oh, look at that. What is this? There's like shots that are just on the ground. Huh. Can you grab those? You can, but you can't move them. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Well, there's one more thing I want to do. What I want to do is I want to tell the AI to flee from me. And then I want to immobilize their vehicle with 
the drone. So this is a good test of abilities here. Not only do you have to fly the drone, you also have to line up the weapon with the vehicle you're tailing. And that was way too easy. That thing is actually immobilized? Yeah, okay, I expected that to last a lot longer. I don't know exactly how they got immobilized so fast right there, but they are actually dead. So I'm gonna try it again. Because I feel like I should have to go around at least one corner. Like right there, I went around none. So I'm giving them a little bit more of a head start this time. So hopefully this one has more of a chase element to it. And one other thing I should mention is you cannot let the barrel of the gun spin down. If it spins down, you can no longer fire. It's really weird, but it's something you guys gotta get used to. So if you see me just firing at nothing, it's because I'm just trying to keep the barrel spun up. So this is what I wanted to do though. Here we go. We gotta go around the corner to keep on them. And I'm trying to go around the corner and shoot them at the same time. Oh, this is, this is what I wanted to see. All right, let's see if I can kind of get in front of them right here and shoot at them, shoot at them. This is the perfect spot. Finish them, finish them, finish them. Come on, I see I'm still driving. Wait, I think that might've done it. I'm still firing, but I think that might've done it. And as you see right here, the gun stopped. I'm hitting fire, nothing's happening. So all we can do is charge the drone into them. And when the gun gets tapped and starts spinning again, you can keep firing actually. It's kind of funny. Anyways, I think that will do it for this video. Till next time, this is YBR. I'll see ya.